Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome back to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are in Reading, Pennsylvania. I knew where I was right off of the bat. And we are at Wheel While. Wheel While. I'll put the spelling right down here. Uh, this is my first time being here. I'm very excited. The exterior, come on, looks very promising. Let's get in here and see if we can't find anything for resale. I, I've, I've been tipped off by a wonderful subscriber, fellow community member, Stacy. I'm here, girl. Let's see how it goes. There's a proper view of the exterior. Doesn't it look good? Hopefully they'll let us film. <laughs> it's only a two hour drive, you know, hey. Here we go. I like this, it's like loading zones. We can kind of peek in. We're cheating, we're cheating. There it is. Ooh, it looks good y'all. It does look good, doesn't it? Okay guys, so here we are on the interior. We're gonna do a little quick shot here. Uh, there are obviously more aisles here to the right. I kind of wanted to dive right into it. The first vendor booth caught my eye because I am seeing pumpkins and it is getting to be that time of year if you don't already consider it that time of year. I know that I do. <laughs> it's fall slash Halloween slash Christmas. I mean, we can throw in Thanksgiving there, but look, let's be honest with each other here, right? It's just between me and you. <laughs> oh, and then up top, I do see it. And this is one of the reasons why I did come here. It is a Rushton bunny. What I am showing you is, is that the phone lens that I, the lens, the scope that I use, it's on a periscope, so I can't extend it. And I wanted to get a close up of him. He is complete with his little straw hat and his little sack there on a pole. He unfortunately was not for sale. And we're gonna, we're gonna come back down. <laughs> That thing came in really handy, let me tell you what. I haven't been using it lately, I'm glad I brought it in. And of course we are seeing a lot of display cabinets just filled to the brim with vintage and antique jewelry. This is one area that I know very little about. Uh, if I were to pick up pieces, it would be based solely on aesthetics and not necessarily on a manufacturer. But I did want to take the time to show you guys, especially if you are a jewelry collector or reseller, this place definitely had a selection to choose from. Now, this was really interesting. Uh, these glass cabinets here, these were set into the wall. It was a little difficult to film because of where the lights were situated and uh, the glare. I do see this green satin glass hand-painted uh, egg there. He, she was pretty, but we did leave her behind. Now, we are headed down here to an extension, and it kind of loops around there, and, and we'll get around there in just a second. I wanted to stop in this little off shoot room here i saw that cute little pole toy there very edward mobley there's elvis he's saying a thank you very much and we're back we're into the main aisle here like i say there are there's a lot of stuff in here to choose from you guys if i were to film 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 this place it probably would have been like a three-part video um easily 30 to 40 minutes per video. So we do of course see some uranium glass here in the little cabinet. And I did spot this adorable little Fenton Cobalt fairy lamp. It is of course in the hobnail. It's a smaller one. It was priced at $25. Um, now I do really like these small ones personally because they really can add a splash of color without taking up too much room. And this blue, I'm telling you, great for the summer for the 4th of July. Mark my words, if you, I was testing to see if it glowed. Um, add this into your Christmas, this blue with the green and the red, and it gives you that 1950s Christmas look. It's so good. 
And speaking of so good, look at this lamp. Oh my goodness. I wanted to touch it so bad, but then I was like, it's $695. If I touch it, it'll like fall over and then I'm going to be stuck buying a broken lamp. <laughs> I would not have been happy. I think that's a very fair price. Look, it's just, it's stunning. It is very Art Nouveau as the vendor did have it marked. This is one of those fancy booze. I had my pinky up um, while I was recording. You just, you can't see it. Oh, can you? Not really. They're in the mirror. <laughs> very elegant, very feminine. It is again in that late 1800s, early 1900s. I loved this Art Nouveau bu bust here. Um, she was priced accordingly. She is a larger one. It is Heloise. A lot of the busts were named. So I sadly had to leave her behind. One thing that I did not leave behind were these Napco long neck salt and pepper shakers. Now they are a mismatched pair. Normally it would have been two rabbits or two deer. However, I have been hunting down two, well, at least one long neck deer. And so I did happily pick up this mismatched pair, especially because it was 20% off. And right next door, I saw another 20% off everything. So of course I had to go investigate. And the first thing that caught my eye was naturally the Russian Santa. He is the Coca-Cola Santa, Santa, and he does have the black stitched boots. He does have his original Coca-Cola bottle. He is priced at 125, but again, keep in mind, he is 20% off. So that would make him a hundred dollars. Now, given the condition of that particular Santa, I thought that that was a very fair price and is definitely not unheard of in the Rushton collectible line. As a matter of fact, it, it was quite a deal. You see some of the prices for, again, a Santa in that condition and complete. And of course, what would a video be without at least one little creepy clown there? <laughs> uh. We have 20% off all things. I love a good sale. So we're rooting around in here. And the first thing that caught my eye were these little patchwork cats. They are, of course, salt and pepper shakers. They're like little tigers, little tiger cats, tiger. Well, I mean, I guess a tiger is a cat, large cat. I don't know. So I went ahead and did pick those up. I know that there are quite a few people that have really said, keep your eye out for the patchwork animals. Keep your eye out for the patchwork animals. I'm keeping my eye out just for you. And I got them. I did. <laughs> I love seeing a booth like this when it is just so full of items. I was trying to focus in on that black cat, but of course we got the sale price stickers. So, you know, hey, the only thing about this is that it is a little nerve wracking um, because there were things hanging down from the ceiling. I am tall and I am filming and it is just full. The air, the, the arrows, the aisles are narrow. So it's a little like, oh gosh, don't breathe too much here. <laughs> uh, lot to see as we can see. And it's just a mismatch or a mismatch of items. We've got little art glass. We've got kitsch. We've got mid-century. We've got antiques. I love the Middle Eastern flares to it. I do see that amber paperweight with the Bulacante. It was priced relatively inexpensive. However, if it was in a different color, I would have been more likely to have picked it up. It is very well done, $25. But again, we have 20% off this booth off everything, you guys. Everything. No exclusions. I love when there's no exclusions. So we're creeping, we're lurking. <laughs> Up next, we do have some Wade Whimsies. These are the very desirable ones, and I was hoping that they had the storybook line. Um, I did not see any, and that's unfortunate. You know, these guys were definitely priced for collectors. I loved this fish at six dollars. Um, I kind of was tempted to pick it up for myself and put it into my little mermaid display, but I left it behind. I was trying to be good. 
And yes, we do have two more Rushton rabbits. Now, if you guys are not familiar, the rabbits are highly sought after. The large one was priced at 500. The smaller one was at 400. However, like many of the vendors in the mall, they were 20% off. You guys, this, I know it might not seem it, but this is a tremendous deal. I'm a little regretful that I left the large one behind. Um, yeah, I mean, I sincerely could have bought that at $400 and made, depending on the time and the buyers looking for it, about four to $500. Crazy, but true. Now, I do see a sister to Miss Patty Pate. And if you don't know who Miss Patty Pate is, you're missing out on life. You're going to have to go check out my Instagram and scroll down. It is a chalkware bank in the style of the QP. Obviously, it's not an official licensed piece, but this vendor not only had the Rushtons, but all of these great chalkware pieces. These are just super kitschy, super fun. They're bright. They're colorful. They're heavy. Um, so it's got to be something really special for me to want to pick it up. I really regret not picking up that Cupie, Michael, live in regret, live in regret. You know the saying, better or no, more is lost through indecision than the wrong decision. Think about that one. It's very sage advice. More is lost through indecision than the wrong decision. I know some of y'all are going to be screaming at me on this one. Why didn't you get it? <laughs> it's a pink poodle. I know. And you know what? She was in really good condition. However, I know I'm about to break your hearts. I did leave her behind. But you know what? If you are in the Allentown area, she was there when I was last there. So you can pick her up. She's on sale or was on sale. Look at all the bright, fun colors, though. Isn't that great? Here we're going down just one of many, many aisles. Now, I will tell you that this is, it's an old building. It seems to be an old train stop. And um, there's no air conditioning. <laughs> Y'all know the summer that we have been having. So it, I kind of started to get a little warm at this point. So we're just really panning around. This is kind of more of a tour, I would say, than a shop with me. While, of course, you know, we are buying things for resale and some things for collection. Do you see those pretty Nippon vases in the back? I just absolutely love them. I, I think they're so elegant. Um, and there is definitely an artistry that is involved to them. But again, it's very much kind of like your standard fare on this one. I wasn't seeing anything that was screaming, take me home, take me home. Now, this one was whispering. This one was whispering. It is a Victorian ornament, um, you know, obviously with the paper and the wired tinsel there or garland, if you prefer. The material is tinsel. I guess the product is garland. <laughs> I don't know. Look at these little monkeys. Did you see them there? Um, and then I did see this apron hook here. This is the pig. And there is a smaller one that we will see here in just a moment. These were originally manufactured to be apron holders, which, I mean, I just think that they're absolutely adorable and make for a good conversation piece if you have them on the wall. Now, I do spot these two little figurines. Uh, recently, I found two very large. They were probably three times the size. It was actually the girl with the walking stick and her twin who happened to have a little cat. Now, this one, I found the girl with the walking stick and the little boy with the little puppy. So I did decide to go ahead and pick them up. They're absolutely adorable. Great for a kitsch display. They're kind of shady. They are. They got, they're like little mischievous looks to them. <laughs> Now, I did spot these Santa with green rhinestone eyes. They are salt and pepper shakers. I, I know. I This is one of those things where I was like, oh, my gosh, Santa, green rhinestone eyes. And then I kind of was like, I'm not really digging them. I'm not feeling them. I don't know. They just they weren't speaking to me. I know I drank crazy juice before before I went in, into the mall and the heat started to fry my brain too. truth be told, like I was wearing a wool hat. So, you know, 
<laughs> now, of course, my brain wasn't too far gone at this point to not want to stop and appreciate and show off this beautiful Royal Ducks vase very much in the Art Nouveau. Again, we're talking, mm, this one was probably mid late 1800s. This was prior to Duck, Royal Ducks, part of me, uh, putting on their pink triangle. A lot of the utilitarian pieces they did not, more so the figural pieces, they would apply a pink piece of ceramic to it, and it is in the shape of a triangle. The vase is priced at 150. You know, fair enough for a collector. Unfortunately, I just didn't want to spend it, and it was firm, so there was no discount. Now, I did spot this Fenton Amber Thumbprint Swung Vase. Come on, adjectives. Um, it was priced at $32, which is very fair. I really kind of wanted to pick this up. However, I, you know, at $32, I just, I got kind of leery about picking that up. You know, there was definitely room for profit on it. I just questioned how much, especially because it was in the amber. Now, I did see this Lucite what, and I was like, what What in the world? Oh, it's a road runner. <laughs> and it does have the crushed up shells inside of the Lucite. A really interesting piece. I've definitely never seen a road runner before. More often, um, seahorses is very typical for that. And speaking of sea creatures, I just this thing is mammoth mammoth trying to use my hand there for reference and it very much is in the style of a clam this was definitely something that you would sit in the middle of a of a table and just let it speak for itself up next i did find this art glass piece and i was struggling to kind of figure out what in the world are you, you got to take a guess before we show it it is a art glass snail and i said are you and then I was like, oh, I see. The amber part is the shell, and his little antenna are up there. Got it. Check. Beautiful piece. I love the browns and blues together. I don't know what that is that really speaks to me. Um, he was very interesting, but again, the price wasn't saying take me home. Again, very fair for a collector. I was just hesitant as a reseller to get it. If it was priced a little lower, I would have snatched that up, no problem. Now we do have two paper mache parrots here. Um, they're in amazing condition, a little toucan here, a red toucan. Uh, they were priced at $99 each. Now I know that there are quite a few collectors out there and much like the Rushton, they're not afraid to throw down on some paper mache tropical birds. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's my market, so I did leave those guys behind. And I am showing you off some beautiful mid-century furniture as well as light fixtures here. Look at this old bike, gas-powered bike. I'm unsure as to the manufacturer, but I did want to show that piece off to you. Again, we've got another vendor just full of beautiful items. Um, I'm about to break some hearts when we go in here. I, I am, truth be told. And, you know, a lava lamp thrown in there, too. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, the first item that I'm going to break your hearts on is this beautiful iridized um, deer here. She's very elegant. Look at that, that beautiful oil slick or gasoline finish to her. She was, she was beautiful. She was priced at $35. Do I think that I could have made some money on it? Yeah, I absolutely do. Here's the thing. I never, are there specific buyers that I have in mind when I am looking at this piece? A hundred percent. But as a reseller, I think that, and this is, I think, really good advice. I don't think that it is wise to ever expect people to, one, Oh no, pardon me, it's priced at 38. Um, to be at the sale and to actually want this piece because you could be off. Maybe that's the day that they aren't feeling that piece. So I never expect people, even though that there are people that I have in mind for certain pieces to buy certain pieces. And that is a risk, you know? Um, it is a calculated risk when you do those things. Now, up next, this is something I personally regret leaving behind. It was priced at $82. I think as a collector, it is well worth it. It is cased glass with um, 
stained glass. It is there's multiple applications to this glass with the applied swirl on it that cut at the top. Look at the gl they had it labeled as bittersweet. Now it's not bittersweet, um, but very much in line to that bittersweet coloring. It was stunning. I wish I was capturing it better on film. I would the camera was wanting to be hateful. Work it out, Michael. And then I said, well, forget you. <laughs> it is, of course, hand blown. Now, if you did see yesterday's video, no, not yesterday, if Sunday's video, which was supposed to be on Monday, you'll see that I did find a blue one. So that was kind of cool. And I did find the blue one the same day. Now, this beautiful floor lamp here with the jade, I wanted to see if it glowed and it sure did look at the fluoresce on that bad boy beautiful piece and they had it priced at 355 again very fair especially for a collector um definitely would not want to ship that <laughs> And um, yeah, please do not touch. Please don't touch. I was afraid to breathe too heavy on it. Look at the stunning beauty of this. And I do believe this is a Fenton piece. I, I, I yeah, very fragile. Agreed. Um, I would be horrified to ship this. And I'm pretty brave on my shipping. This is something I, I would be like, uh, no, not going to ship it. Isn't it beautiful? I don't know what one would call this. It very much looks like it is more of an artisan piece of glass meant to mimic kind of like a flower. Lilies is what it's really saying to me. What does it say to you guys? And I'm saying it is so hot. You see the natural dewy skin happening, AKA sweat. <laughs> And then we did have this really interesting piece. Um, and I was like, okay, what's going on here? And we read the tag and it actually was part of a window display in Bloomingdale's. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and it was in the Bloomingdale's New York flagship store to promote a book and it was hung in the kids department. I thought that was fantastic. And I wonder what book it was. If you know, I would love to hear about it down in the comments below. Now, up next, I do find this little sock, sock or poppet doll. Um, the little Easter pixies, she was priced at $10. I'm keeping her. Forget it. I have been on the hunt for one of these ones. And the fact that she's in that green is just all the, the much more better for me. I really wanted that mint green one. They have pink and blue. Those those little Easter pixie dolls there, they go for like $60. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to pay $60. But I happily paid that $12. All right, guys, we are getting towards the end here. So we're going to hit you up outside here in just a moment. But we're just kind of taking another quick perusal through, giving you guys a quick overview. All right, guys, I'll see you outside. Well, guys, there you have it. I am roasting. I'm sweating. Um, there was no air conditioning. <laughs> it's 90 degrees out today and humid. So it was a wonderful store. There was a lot to choose from. Be beautiful items, a vast array of vintage and antiques. So I did like and appreciate that. There were some amazing displays. I would recommend checking it out, especially if you are a collector. Um, definitely worth a visit. And I will make sure to put the name, the address, the phone number, and a direct link to the website below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, until next time, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.